When you mentioned my father, I must say uh, three words about him. He was uh, one of the rocket pioneers in Germany. So when in, uh, in the brutal times of war, the scientists unfortunately uh, had to use their skills for weapons. So he built the electronics for the first German V2 rockets, V2, yes. And uh, he has seen so much misery in his life after all these wars. Pinamunda. Yes. So he said, uh, after a certain moment, and I agree 100% with him, uh, what we have, uh, engineers, everybody on the earth has a responsibility in what he's doing. The more you know, the good for you, but the more responsibility. Yes. Now you must ask a uh, responsibility in knowing how you could bring autonomy to poor people. Every sec six seconds we are speaking here, one man is dying starvation on this earth. And secondly, uh, since uh, we are living in the time of spaceships, and we believe that is a big future, and we have, to, and we know how to treat uh, as a system of a satellite. It must be closed system. You wouldn't come to the idea uh, that the astronauts in the European Space Station are divided in two third poor and one third rich, and that uh, one part is doing all the job and the others not. They must cooperate. And what we don't realize really, uh, most of us, is that we are already living on a big satellite. Only this one is much nicer than the technical ones. It is covered with a fantastic uh, biology, um, with the ecosphere, and we are at the, in the way to destroy it. That is for sure clear, we are in a big danger as a society. Uh, and the numbers, uh, you, you know them all, but uh, it's alarming to know that on this earth you have now over 2 billion people, they have to live for less than 1 US dollar per day. Whilst you have uh, some uh, so rich that they could do something, but they don't think about it. So now coming back to the sun, that's a solution with the knowledge we have. And Sterling is one of the solutions, but there are many answers. Let me speak a little bit about this to develop the idea. We have what we call envelope power village. Um, so, first of all, we heard it, we have a, a huge amount surplus energy falling on the planet. About 15,000 times more every moment in radiant energy as then the whole humanity is consuming in electricity, mechanical power, chemical power, whatever. 15,000 times more. That's good. And everybody, I don't want to blame India, but it's the most largest grid I ever have seen in my life in India. You are losing so much energy through your grid. And uh, the photons are coming directly. They have an inbuilt grid. Every square meter in Tamil Nadu uh, receives per year a lot of energy. Question would be how much is it could be counted, for example, in oil equivalent? And you can. In Tamil Nadu, it's about 250 liters per square meter a year. And imagine, uh, and then you know how large your country is. You are very rich. You only don't use it. You start, even you misuse it in a certain way. Uh, being not far uh, from the equator, you have very steep sunshine. So your roofs, just to give one example, are heating like they are uh, by the incident 250 liters of oil per square meter, as if you would burn this. And you don't isolate your roofs. Uh, so, but you put in uh, air conditioners to get rid of the heat. So the first thing you could think is why wouldn't we install uh, first ID a reflector on the roof that would spare us a lot of money but then couldn't that reflector not be an active one which is using the energy. 
So you see, I'm starting to speak about multifunction. Describe how the nature and the gods of the former time invented everything. So if you go to the green plants, photosynthesis, uh, it's considered what is a leaf. I tell you, that a leaf is more precious than a whole chemical complex. Not in the terms of a today's economy, but in technology. If we would like to build a leaf which receives this light flux and which is the base of our life because it's producing oxygen, because it's producing sugar molecules, all the biomass, we would not be able. All what we are now starting as high tech for the future, nanotechnology has been invented by nature. All these structures changing the photons hitting uh, as a leaf is nanotechnology. And uh, membranes inside, selective, and so on and so on. So what I say is, if we go into solar energy, let's observe how nature used solar energy. So when we speak about photovoltaics, it's a wonderful element, elegant transformation of photons direct in electricity. However, is something like this existing in nature? You would say no, that's not true. Because every leaf at the first is producing electricity. So you would say, but this leaf is done, because if a tree would know it, he could sell us the electricity. But the toy is very simple. It's just a cylinder here, Yes, you can come from on here, you see it better. And this cylinder is filled with air. Air we have everybody, uh, everywhere. And then we have some sort of a little piston here and a crank mechanism. Now what I want to show you is that, and the air here is contained hermetically. So no inlet out, that's once you fill air in. And now, you seal, seal. And now uh, we will get hot water and uh, I will put this metallic plate. Very hard. Yeah. So this is now uh, nearly boiling. Yeah, yeah. Put, yeah, yeah, put yeah. all in. Put, 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 put. Yeah, yeah. This is nearly boiling water. Everybody of you who ever have seen a solar collector knows that it's very easy to produce boiling water. So now what I want to make is I want to bring some of the heat of the water through this metallic wall in the air. And easy, I put it on it. And uh, then, Mr. Prabhaka, you can start the engine. The honor of you. Oops. Yes, that's right. There's a tattoo. Ah, that's a leaf. Yeah, yeah. Now we have it. So you see it. Okay. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah. So you see now we extract uh, some of the hot water's energy and we translate it to mechanical energy. And uh, of course, imagine. Uh, instead of having such small engine, you have a larger and you connect it to a generator, you make your electricity or you connect it to, to, water, pump, water, pump, to, to water pump and so on. And all this you will see in the little movie. And now uh, the heat which is going into the engine is coming, that I will explain you how it is coming from a novel type of some sort of a greenhouse. And the heat then is stored in a large cup, if you want, which is well isolated, so it's not losing much temperature. Uh, so you can use uh, the sun uh, energy day and night. And uh, very important is very simple materials. Air as a working gas, um, metal, which can be built locally, um, of course, you need the knowledge, and, but this is to be to educate it, and then we have something. Okay, I think okay. We, we let this run a little bit, and I go ahead with my little explanation there. Which we put perpendicular to the sun, 
rays in one meter by one meter, so that the power is about one kilowatt of radiant energy, which is a lot of energy. And uh, this is content in all the spectrum. Now we, we know that the plant needs light. And the question is, do the plant need all the light? Or would they need less? Uh, if you observe the nature, you go to Rajasthan, there you have really a lot of sunshine. In the tar desert, nothing is growing. Too much sunshine. Then you go to Ireland, there's mostly cloudy and only diffused light comes through, or over the jungles, there you have the best. Uh, only this small observation shows you when I take out some of the energy, I have better growing. And looking a little bit more near, you will find uh, what is called active radiation spectrum. And it is only a part in the blue, nothing in the green, and most in the red and yellow. If I say nothing in the green, you have a perfect proof with your eyes. You look to a leaf, it's green. As you know, uh, the mixed color of all this visible spectrum is white. So if you have a white wall, it's white because all the light is reflected to your eyes and the mixture is white. If you see something green, it means it absorbs the energy but reflects the green. If it is reflecting, cannot use it. So this is a little proof of what I say here. Um, but more important in this context is evidently the energy surface for the photosynthesis is much smaller than the energy surface of incoming light. Th that is an explanation why behind clouds, where you have the strong sun, most of the energy sticks in the cloud for water condensation, and here now you have diffuse light, you have the best result must be something like a filter bringing through this part of the light. And energy-wise, it means if all is one kilowatt, then you need only 150 watts per square meter for the plants. Therefore, we said, let's invent an artificial cloud which, which stays stationary and from which we can extract the 850 watts which are sticking in the cloud and let's make out of this the heat uh, which uh, we have seen here let's store this heat and let's run engines there and doing this uh, we will observe that suddenly we have much better growing conditions so what we have to do we have a piece of land we build in the simplest case, a greenhouse, which is completely transparent. We put in lenses that are capting 85% of the energy and bringing it to concentrated zones where we have black tubes. And as there we let flow through typically water or if we want to go higher temperature, some plant oil, so you can heat it to 200 degrees without pressure. You connect this, you go to the storage, you isolate the storage, you build such an engine in bigger, you will see it, put it here, the flywheel and all the mechanism. Now you don't want to put this engine in the hot oil, therefore, you produce an heat exchanger and you produce a heat exchanger in here which will transmit if you open a valve uh, the oil will flow of the water and transmit its heat to the gas which will expand from now from where is now coming the cooling if you have sitting such a system in a village you will have a water well from which you will have to pump water. So a part of the mechanical energy produced by the engine will be associated to a little pump, and this little pump 
pumps the water up and through a second heat exchanger, which is cold, you cool it, and what comes out is drinking water. Now you have the engine producing uh, the mechanical energy, and it's producing also after sunshine uh, hours, night time, and if the storage is big enough, uh, you can uh, overgo certain period. If that, if that would be.